Hello everyone, this is Rick and welcome to Astral Club. This is Diplomatic Mission to the Gray Planet, Part 2. If you haven't seen Part 1, you might want to replay it, but um, just real briefly, uh, I was brought before the council, even though I wasn't all that eager to be brought there. They thanked me, uh, and then they asked me to perform a diplomatic mission to go to the planet, uh, what I call the planet of the greys, because they had fallen out of contact. And as a member of the uh, Galactic uh, Council, um, they were, um, they wanted to know what happened because the greys are an important part of the, uh, the Galactic group. So uh, reluctantly, I agreed to be sent there. And when I got there, I reunited with Ken, who was on his way to meet with some uh, old, loyal uh, expeditionary force people that he used to command. And um, he gave uh, what must have been a stirring speech, even though most of it went over my head. I know it involved tradition and the fact that this, this, uh, this new council seemed to be uh, taken over by some of these new members. Uh, because they had to be replaced because the old ones had been um, had been killed and they weren't anywhere near a place where they could have been regenerated. So they were lost for good, which is a huge loss for them because their council had remained the same for thousands of our years. They're very tradition bound society. They're also fairly, they're also very nonviolent with each other. Um, there normally are no weapons on their planet. They only carry weaponry with them when they're off planet. So it's a big no-no for their world. At any rate, I did see some weapons amongst um, uh, Ken's troops, but I was told that they were voluntary neural paralyzers. And I wonder if they're the kind of things that are used on humans now that I think of it. Because how many humans report being paralyzed and then going into some sort of an examination, unable to, to move? And it's obviously a voluntary uh, nerve and muscle paralyzer because <laughs> otherwise you'd stop breathing. So I just wondered if perhaps that's something that, the, that they use off planet as well. At any rate, um, when the speech was over, um, we all went outside again, and everybody seemed, um, at least for the Greys, very, um, very excited, very um, motivated, as much as it's possible for me to try to discern their emotional state, which is different than ours. Um, when they're excited, they tend to hum, and, and sometimes when they hum at a higher and higher level, it indicates a higher level of excitement. At least that's what I got out of it. Out, once we went outside, I noticed that someone had landed a fleet of uh, more of these um, these craft that we could use, the anti-grav craft, to travel to the main city where the council is housed in a sanctum that's surrounded by a wall. As I said, it's normally not guarded because there's no need for it. Everyone knows what it is and whether you're allowed to be there or not, so there's no reason for guards. So we traveled for a bit until we finally got to the capital city, and then we landed, and we probably were something like a half a kilometer away or so from the actual building. So everybody uh, exited their crafts, and um, we formed a, a marching unit and started marching towards the uh, the, uh, the the you know the council sanctum. Uh, I was uh, up front with Ken. Um, keep in mind that uh, you know uh, the Greys can see me in my astral body, especially when I'm in a lower vibratory level. Uh, I of course am in my astral body, so I'm not worried myself for any reason other than my concern for what's going on here on what I'd previously considered a pretty well-balanced 
tradition-bound, stable society that seemed to now be in the process of a coup. And as a diplomat from the council, um, I guess I should strike a kind of a neutral um, state, but I couldn't help but feel um, sympathy for Ken because he's my friend and um, uh, I like him and I trust him. So I was more willing to trust him than I was some new counselors that seem to be pulling the greys away from the, the galactic organization. So we continued to, uh, to march till we got to the uh, entrance to the gate. And surprisingly, there was, uh, there was a troop of guards there um, stopping us from entering. Uh, Ken went forward and started talking with them. Um, they recognized him. He's a very famous military commander on their planet. And he asked them what they were doing there, that there was never guards here before. And, and they said that they were ordered by the new council to uh, make sure that nobody uh, intrudes. And even more seriously, they were given weapons, unlike the neural paralyzers that our troops had. They had, and this is something I kind of picked up from Ken's thoughts, they had a forbidden weapon that, that is forbidden on their planet. And they don't even like to use it off planet, but it's a type of a particle beam that disrupts atomic bonds. So uh, using that on someone um, completely annihilates them in such a way that they can't be reconstituted. So it's death for greys in the most realist sense of the word. And the fact that they had these on their planet was, I don't know, it, it was, it'd be akin to saying some of our soldiers regarding the White House with, with, tactical nuclear weapons that they would be willing to use on a protesting crowd outside the White House. I mean, that would be, that's what I got, the level of violation that was going on here. And I could sense, even though their emotions are alien, I could sense the absolute shock. And as Ken was talking to them, he was conveying you know, his own shock and also calling on their, their, um, their traditional values, which mean extremely um, a lot to their people. And, and he, was, he was asking them, are you going to use those destructive weapons on your own people? And, and I could see the uncertainty in the, uh, those, those guards' minds. And the more they thought about it and the more they looked at uh, Ken's troops and they just moved aside, dropped the weapons, and they actually joined our group. So with that, we all continued to file in to the council chambers, which are, it doesn't look fancy like some of our places do here on earth, like the White House with with the White House garden. And it, it, it certainly was a larger chamber, but it wasn't adorned. Um, it, it was very much the, the color of sand with silver highlights. And it was a circular structure that looked to me um, kind of like a, a huge, enormous igloo, uh, if you can imagine that. And, um, and the entrance uh, also had uh, a very familiar uh, entrance to an igloo type uh, look to it. So uh, we made our way through the doors. Uh, at first, Ken was surprised because we couldn't open the doors, which should have been open anyway, but they were closed. And it appeared like they were locked, which is completely bizarre to them because nobody locks doors. Uh, on the gray planet, it, it's unheard of. Um, but one of the ex guards who had dropped their weapons came forward and said, oh yeah, they've instituted um, locks 
on um, sonic locks on the doors. And so Ken said, okay, we'll open them. And so the guy pulled out um, something that looked, actually it looked a lot to me like the type of um, instrument that people who steal cars use. It's like a long piece of steel and it, it's used to kind of uh, get down over a window and pull up a lock. Uh, at any rate, he he held it up against the door and then there was a sound inside and then the doors opened up. So then we all filed through. Uh, there was a, a fairly long hallway that we had to walk down till we got to the main chamber, which against tradition was also sealed. Uh, this time, uh, there was no way to open it up because the, the same guard tried again, but his tool didn't work. Um, so we were kind of at a loss for a minute as to what to do. Um, but then one of the guards suggested that they use their disruptor guns to take the door out. And nobody had any better ideas, so they fired it at the doors. And they were doors that were pretty big, too. I would say they're about twice my size. And there was two of them, you know, together that would open up. And when he fired this weapon, uh, I heard this very unpleasant whining sound. And it felt like the air was vibrating. Uh, I don't know what it felt like for somebody in a physical body, but it was unpleasant for me, I can tell you that. At any rate, the... The doors, I, I don't know how to describe what happened to them. Uh, they just kind of dissolved. And then there was nothing but some colored dust on the floor. So talk about a powerful weapon. I can only imagine what would happen if you'd fired it at a living being, which is probably why it's forbidden uh, on their planet and even by custom. So... With that, we walked in on a rather surprised council. Uh, and they were all seated in their places in a semicircle around a much larger room that had a dome above it, which I had seen previously. And uh, it allowed the, the sun to come in um, when that heat and light was desired. And then they could cause it to shade with the kind of technology. I'm sure that's not that different from what we can do uh, as far as um, darkening windows and that kind of stuff. Uh, so we marched in and Ken announced that he was here to restore tradition to the council. Uh, with that, uh, one of the counselors stood up and he commanded a troop which were standing on, on, on the side wall, on both side walls, actually, of this chamber, who they were holding those same disruptor-type weapons. And they ordered um, the commander to fire on us because we were... I can't use the word traitors because it's not quite the same thing. I think something like anti-traditionalists. I guess that's their version of the worst insult you can say, even though we were the traditionalists, but that's the feeling that I got. And so the commander at first just kind of stared at the counselor to make sure he'd heard him right. And he was commanded to do it again. And I could tell that most of the other counselors were in shock. About three of them, though, I could tell were on the side of this this uh, this leading counselor uh, commanding this war crime, quite frankly, and and in their society, an abomination, because to use something like that on us would be to destroy us utterly, and that's something that's just it's just not done in their society. Uh, we humans, we're just too comfortable with, unfortunately, with annihilating one another. So it's, I guess it's harder for 
maybe my people are listening to this to really get the horror of what I'm talking about here. And so he was commanded to do so again. And um, the commander looked around and I could see he settled on me. And as, uh, as I was obviously uh, an alien, I think he figured that, well, he could obey the command and shoot me and it wouldn't be as bad. But of course, I don't, he didn't realize in his shock that I wasn't there in the physical. So when he fired that weapon at me, uh, it went through me. Now, I wasn't unaffected. I felt a very disturbing vibration. It reminded me the most of the vibration that I felt when I mistakenly went into a parallel version of myself and eventually I was ejected because my vibratory level was not, or my particular signature, was not identical to myself in that alternate universe. And it became, and it becomes very unpleasant and you're ejected. That's the most, that it, that's what it felt like to me. And it felt just, just, it felt warm. It felt very unpleasant. And it was, it, I kind of had my version of, I, I can only imagine people who have those severe headaches, those migraines. That's, that's what it felt like to me. But other than that, it just went through me and took out a whole rank of our troops. Um, it just went through a whole rank. And, and there was at least 20 of them that just melted. I don't know how else to say it. It, it, it was just, they were just gone. When, when the guard saw what he had done, he threw down his weapon and he started this weird keening. I think that's the word that uh, comes, it comes from Ireland of this whining sound that I could tell was just their version of, of absolute horror and misery. All the other troops threw their weapons down too. Um, that was it. They were done. And and with that, um, we moved forward and Ken uh, removed the, uh, and his, his troops removed those three counselors and they were ushered out quickly. Um, the other counselors just couldn't go out of their way quickly enough to thank him and his troops for removing those counselors, um, they were um, enemies that the other counselors said, but they were too powerful and they couldn't fight against them. Uh, at that point in time, Ken was looking to be forgiving and he was still captured by the horror of what had just happened too. Because, you know, in their society, when they get close to uh, their body um, being no longer usable, they go through a process where they are genetically re essentially reincarnated and their soul migrates. So they can live for thousands of years unless there's some sort of an accident or something. So annihilating 20 some of their number is just a crime that probably for us is, is on the level of, you know, an atomic bombing of a city. That's probably the closest I can try to get to, to the magnitude of what had just happened. Um, Ken um, thanked me and uh, for my help and support. I just said, look, I was just here as a friend and also as a, a sort of diplomat for the council. Um, I'm going to tell them what happened and I'm going to assure them that now things have been restored, that you'll return and be another uh, vital member of the council. And he said, absolutely. Um, we will uh, rejoin our place uh, as we are uh, in the galaxy. And I want to thank you once again for your assistance. And I said, sure, thanks, uh, no problem. With that, I uh, returned to my body and I was quite affected by the whole experience. And it took me a while to actually do this because I just had to think this whole thing through and get through the emotional component of it so that I could go through this without getting too choked up. Uh, if you like this, please hit the like button, share it with those 
of Like Minds. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, make sure that bell is rung so you know when that Wednesday afternoon and that Saturday morning uh, videos are released. I really want your questions and comments. And as always, this is Rick, and I'll see you on the astral plane.